Hey, how's it going everyone? Assalamualaikum. In today's video, we are going to be talking about regression analysis. Um, so what is a linear regression anyway? Uh, in our previous videos, we have been talking about correlation and association. And if you have established an association between variables, whether empirically or theoretically from your readings, you are ready to run a regression analysis. So it is safe to say that a regression analysis is a step above correlation analysis. Okay, so your regression model allows you to explain how a change in your predictor variable can affect the changes in your dependent variable, um, which is why in regression, um, oftentimes your independent variables are called uh, predictors and your dependent variables are sometimes called the outcome variable or the predicted variable. There are several types of regression analysis. There's a lot actually, but we are only going to cover simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. All right, so if you have one predictor, and one dependent variable, so you can run simple linear regression. That's why it's called simple, because you have one on one, right? If you have more than one independent variables and a one dependent variable, then definitely it's gonna be multiple linear regression. So multiple is for the multiple predictors that you have. As with other statistical analysis, linear regression also comes with its own assumptions. And please do remember, before running any inferential statistics, you need to address the assumptions for that um, analysis first. If you violate one of the assumptions, then remedying procedures must be undertaken. Okay, so least simple linear regression is sensitive towards outliers, so you can check for outliers. Any significant outliers needs to be removed or treated. Okay, and you have to ensure that your DV is continuous. It can be ordinal, it can be ratio, while your IV can be on any scale. Um, if you have nominal variables, um, then it needs to be dummy coded before running a regression analysis. We also have the assumptions for normality. Your um, dependent variable must be normally distributed. And linearity, where independent and dependent variable must have a linear relationship. We also have the homogeneity of variance or homoscedasticity as well as independence of residuals. And all of this can be addressed using the um, scatter plots or the normal PP plot. So for normality, you can look into the normal PP plot. You can see that if your data is um, distributed on the straight line, then we assume that we have a normal distribution. All right. So if it is distributed like this on this um, third figure here, it is assumed to be not normally distributed. Um, so as for linearity, it needs to be it needs to have a linear relationship between IV and DV. It doesn't matter if it's a positive linear relationship or a negative linear relationship, as long as it doesn't curve like this. So if it's curved like this, then you know that you have a non-linear relationship. You can't run a simple linear regression. You have to run non-linear regression. As for homoscedasticity, you can see the scatter plot that comes after your normal PP plot. Um, you can see that. Uh, over here, the assumptions for homoscedasticity is uh, met, and over here you see that the data seems to be distributed or grouped into a corner here. Then it, we assume that the data is not homoscedastic. It can be called as heteroscedasticity. So independence of residuals, you can take a look at the standardized residual plot. Uh, this is assumed to be normal. The residuals are distributed evenly. Okay, uh, well, this is not uh, the assumptions for independence of residuals are not met. Let's talk about the simple linear regression. So in simple linear regression, as mentioned earlier, you have one IV and one DV. It's relatively very simple. The objective is to test if variable Y depends on variable X. So if your dependent variable is dependent on your independent variable. So this is how you write the hypothesis. Um, that's your regression formula. Or typically, we would write this hypothesis over here. Uh, the increase of occupants does not affect restaurant revenue. So we are talking about hotels here. Um, for your alternative hypothesis, as number of occupants increases, so does restaurant revenue. Uh, we have another example over here. Perceived self-efficacy has no significant influence on perceived ease of use. So for those who are familiar, this is from the... If I'm not mistaken, this is from Utah. Yeah. Perceived self-efficacy has a significant influence on the perceived um, on perceived ease of use, right? 
So this is the simple linear regression equation. Um, it is very important for you to understand this equation. This is fairly very easy over here, where y is your dependent variable and x is your independent variable. So since simple linear regression only has one independent variable, so we only have one axis here. So b0 is beta 0 is the intercept, the value of y when x equals 0 here. Okay, and b1 is the slope, the change in the value of y when x increases by one unit. And well, e over there is your error term. Okay, so let's take a look at this example over here. Um, you can pause right here and input this data in your SPSS. Okay, a bank loan officer wanted to inspect if income affects the value of the car uh, that his prospective customers intend to purchase. Um, the objective here is to test if customers' income influence their selection of car. Uh, there's two influence. There you go. Okay. Hypothesis would be customer income does not influence car selection and customer income positively influence car selection. So let's see. How do we run this over here? Okay. So if you have already inputted your data... Um, from the example one, your data is going to look like this uh, in the data view, and this is going to be your variable view. As you can see in the steps given over here, if you forget, you have to check the assumptions for linear regression first before you can run a linear regression. So how do we do that? Just go to, this is this is the simplest way, you go to legacy dialogs, go to scatter plot, and I want the simple scatter. Okay, so let me just reset that for you. Income is going to be my predictor right so predictor is your x-axis and your dependent variable is your y-axis just click on ok and then you're gonna get the okay the graph here is gonna show you that you can see over here it seems to be uh, distributed normally uh, it seems to have a linear relationship okay so you can proceed with the uh, regression analysis. And we already know that our DV is continuous, right? So what's left for us to check is our homoscedasticity as well as independence of residuals. And that can be checked using um, the regression function over here. So just go to analyze regression, go to linear. And then let me reset that for you. My income is my dependent, sorry, my independent variable. And car price is going to be my dependent variable. Go to statistics. Estimates, we want that. We want confidence interval. We want R squared change, descriptive. Make sure you click on model fit, part and partial correlations, collinearity diagnostics. You can have Durbin Watson as well, case wise di diagnostics, outliers, except outside three standardized standard deviations. Um, so we wanted to test for independence of residuals, right? So for the standardized score, the predictor is my x variable and my standardized residuals is going to be on my y axis. I also want the normal probability plot. I don't need anything else um, over here. So for options, you don't need anything over here there. Okay, just click on OK and SPSS is going to calculate everything for you. All right, let's take a look at the descriptive. Um, yes, my sample size is correct. Um, the mean for car price is actually 174,000. Um, income, the mean income is actually 68,000. All right, so let's take a look at the Pearson correlation over here. You know that you have to have a correlation between the variables. Then you can run uh, regression, right? So car price and income, it has a very high correlation over here. Um, it's 0.9, okay, it's very high, fairly very high. So here's uh, your model summary. We are going to read this later on, ANOVA table as well as the coefficient table, so over here. Um, so this is what I wanna show you. So you see it's linearly, um, it's, it's distributed linearly. So assumptions for linearity is met. Let's take a look. Yeah, this is your scatter plot. Okay. There's no uh, pattern. So homoscedasticity is met. Um, so let's take a look at the independence of residuals. Um, it is between uh, plus minus three, right? It is still between plus minus three. And you have to see like if there's a rectangle shape over here. It seems like there's a rectangle shape over here. Okay, so uh, all of the assumptions are met. 
so you can read this regression without any issues okay let's go back to our slides over here okay so normal pp plot shows residuals are normally distributed there seem to be no outliers okay all points are within plus minus three there's no systematic pattern in the scatter plot assumptions of linearity and homoscedasticity and independence of residuals are all met okay so you can also further test for normality using the residual scores analyze descriptive explore and then test for normality right um I did not save the residual scores. Um, if you had saved the residual scores, then you can try and test for this. So let's take a look. The p-value for Shapiro-Wilk um, is actually more than 0.5. Uh, normality of the residuals is therefore assumed. You can you can do that. Okay. So let's take a look at the output over here. So we have our descriptive and we have our correlation. Um, so this is how you write it out. Uh, average price, uh, average car price is actually 174,000 with a plus minus standard deviation of 24, 27,000. Average income is 68,000.2 um, plus minus standard deviation of 9.395. Correlation coefficient is 0.932, get it from here, which is more than 0 0.30 um, by Cohen, indicating that there is a correlation between the two variables. So R squared. This is from your model summary, so let's take a look at the R-squared. R-squared is the coefficient of determination. It tells us how much of the variance in the DV is explained by the model itself. So in this model, we have one DV and one IV, right? So our IV is actually my uh, our income, and our DV is car price. So in this model over here, income explains 87% of the variation in car price, which is very good because income itself, income alone explains 87%. And that means another, uh, another 27%, sorry, another 13% is explained by other predictive variables out there in the environment that we probably um, did not measure, all right? So the output over here, you can see p-value is more than 0 0.05. This is where you find the p-value at the significant level. Means that the model is a good model and income can be used to predict price. All right. So regression equation price. So this is where your regression equation plays into um, its part. Um, price equals to 0.8733. Uh, so where do I get this? This is from constant. So when your independent variable is zero, this is going to be the price, the car price at constant, right? Um, plus 2.688 income with a 95% confidence interval between 2.170 and 3.206. Right. So this is how you report a linear regression in APA format. A simple linear regression was calculated to predict respondents' car price based on their income. A significant regression equation was found with an F value of, uh, this is your DF, so 1 and 18, okay, 1 and 18 over here, okay, 118.76, sorry, 118.76, so, okay, the P value of less than 0 0.001 with an R squared of 0.868. Respondents predicted car price is equal to negative 8.733 plus 2.68 income where income is measured in thousands of dollars respondents car price increased 2.688 thousand dollars for each thousand of dollar increase in income income is a significant predictor for car price or income positively affect respondents price of car purchased so this is how you can use your regression model as a predict uh, as a predictor okay so for example we want to predict the car price um, based on a certain number of income that is given Right, so this is the regression formula for here. Can be used to predict a car price in the descriptive data. Minimum and maximum income values are fifty-one and eighty-six. So you have the uh, minimum and maximum. This can be um, extracted using the descriptive um, analysis. Okay, as such, the prediction can only be performed within this range. Remember that. All right. So check your descriptive analysis first. Uh, check the minimum and ma maximum, and you can only use these numbers to predict. All right. So since the average income is actually 68.20, the prediction will be more reliable for income value around, okay, around 68.20. For example, number one, um, so if my income is 65,000, 
um, I want to predict the car price that I will buy, right? So just plug in 65,000 over there, all right, 65,000 over there, and then calculate that. You're going to get 165,987. So that's going to be your car price. So always remember that the units are in thousand of dollars, right? Okay, example number two, income is 80,000 with a price of, um, so that's how you calculate the car price. So if your income is 80,000, the car price that you're going to purchase is actually 206,307. So that's how you use the regression analysis for prediction purposes. All right, so here's exercise number one. Um, it's similar with the correlation and association exercise. Um, have fun doing it. And I'm going to upload the video of the answers for the exercise um, probably sometime next week or we will meet on Google Meet to discuss uh, the exercise. Um, all right. So I'll see you in our next video. Thank you.